Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about cancer metabolism and the protein P53 and a new insight into P53 activation by alterations in the ratio of NADH to NAD+. And as you'll hopefully understand by the end of the video, this has to do with dimerization of a protein known as CTBP or C-terminal binding protein. So for those of you who don't follow me on Twitter, um, maybe you won't know that P53 is an important protein to me because it's the protein that I study. And um, I like to think it's quite a famous protein. And one of the reasons that it is such, well, a famous and well-studied protein is because more than 50% of tumours have mutations at the P53 gene location. And these mutations affect the function of P53, which is as a tumour suppressor. And so P53 is activated by a variety of different stresses that cells undergo, and it activates various different responses in accordance to these stresses. And this is all to restore homeostasis within a cell and to prevent any damage. And so for these reasons, this is why P53 is often referred to as a tumour suppressor. However, when the protein gets mutated, these responses become defective and that can lead to cancer growth and tumour formation. So how does it achieve these different responses? Well, P53 is a transcription factor. So what that means is it can bind to DNA and activate the expression of lots of different genes. And the way by which P53 does this is by binding DNA as a tetramer. So P53 is a pretty important protein and for these reasons its expression is tightly regulated. So in a normal unstressed cell, P53 is continuously made and then degraded and it's degraded by a protein known as MDM2. So this seems like a pretty wasteful mechanism and the equivalent would be using all my energy to, to bake a cake to then just put that cake in the bin and to just keep on repeating this process. But then the good thing is that if suddenly someone wanted a cake because it's a birthday, I would have one that ready and made to be used straight away. And the same goes for the cell. If a stressful occurrence happens, P53 has already been made that it can just get activated and stabilised and respond to the stress. And so it's a rapid response. Now, when I talk about P53, I often like to show this slide because it pretty much represents how I feel when it comes to trying to read the literature surrounding P53. And so because it's so highly studied, there's just so much information out there. But at the same time, we still don't fully understand this protein. It's a bit an enigma. Anyhow, I try to do my best to keep up with the literature. And so obviously I recently read this paper uh, that talks about P53 and its interaction with the NADH to NAD plus ratio. So before I go any further into explaining the results from that paper, we just briefly need to recap what NAD plus actually is. So I feel like I've spoken about NAD plus quite a few times now, but why not? It's such an important cofactor for the body and it's involved in so many different interactions, but its main functions can be split down into two different areas, one of which is its role as a redox coenzyme and the other is as a substrate for NAD plus consuming enzymes. So in this video, we'll focus on its association as a redox coenzyme. And so this simply refers to its involvement in metabolic processes. So the easiest way I thought to explain this would be through a diagram. So metabolism involves breaking down molecules to obtain energy. And so one of these molecules is glucose. And so glucose can get transported into cells and through a process known as glycolysis can produce ATP. And during this process, it also consumes NAD plus and reduces NAD plus to NADH. The products of glycolysis can then get transported into the mitochondria where they can be further metabolized to produce more ATP or the energy source for the cell. And also through this process, you can regenerate NAD plus. And so this makes NAD plus available to be used again through glycolysis. Another way to regenerate NAD plus is by converting the products of glycolysis to lactate. But this results in lactate being secreted from cells and this can have consequences because it increases the acidity of the environment. So in normal cells, the ratio of NADH to NAD plus is around one to 700. However, in cancer cells, this ratio can get increased to around three to 700. An increase in NADH compared to NAD plus can be seen when there's an increased flux through glycolysis. 
Now, there are many different hallmarks of cancer, and one of these hallmarks is dysregulated metabolism. So tumours develop because of uncontrolled growth, and to fuel this growth, the cell needs energy. And so this increased flux and glycolysis is one way in which it can get more energy, and it can also fade the need to go through the mitochondrial pathway, which could generate reactive oxygen species that could cause damage to the cell. This is often referred to as aerobic glycolysis because there's still oxygen in the cell so it could in theory go to the mitochondria but it instead seems to promote glycolysis. So you have glycolysis in the presence of sufficient oxygen. And so glycolysis is more than just a linear pathway and intermediates within this pathway can be used in different metabolic pathways as well and one of these is the pentose phosphate pathway which can be used to generate NADPH which is thought to prevent and alleviate DNA damage. In addition, intermediates in the glycolysis pathway can also be used for nucleotides biosynthesis and this can aid growth of the cell. The problem is, is that glycolysis uses NAD plus and forms NADH and whilst you can still regenerate that NAD plus by converting the products to lactate, you don't regenerate as much as you would do if it went through the mitochondrial pathway. However, when the rate of glycolysis can get too high, it could lead to glycolytic stress, which could actually cause more damage than good for the cell. And so when a cell typically gets damaged, there are kind of two typical responses, one of which is cell death, and the other is survival but the consequence is that you could end up with even more mutations within the DNA which could further drive tumour development. And so this is where P53 comes in because as we know it is involved in responding to cellular stress. And indeed studies have shown that activation of P53 by preventing cell growth reduces that metabolic demand and other studies have shown that P53 can promote this pentose phosphate pathway to produce more NAD. PH. But what these studies haven't shown is what actually activates P53 in the first place in response to this increased glycolytic flux. And so this is what the paper tried to get at. And to summarise a lot of really hard work in a very short period of time, what they found was that this is related to a protein known as CTBP, which stands for C-terminal binding protein. And so this protein can either be found as a monomer or it can dimerize, and previous studies have shown that its dimerization is due to the levels of NADH within a cell. So when there are higher levels of NADH, it promotes the dimerization of this protein. And so interestingly, when this protein CDBP is a monomer, it is shown to interact with MDM2, which is this protein that leads to P53 degradation. However, when it's in its dimer form, it showed in the study that P53 got stabilised and activated. So therefore the ratio of NADH to NAD plus is really important for activating P53 in this situation. However, there are still some unanswered questions such as how this interaction between CTBP and MDM2 actually enhances P53 degradation and how the loss of this interaction can result in stabilisation of P53. And so Beyond that, there's also some interesting points to consider from the study, and that firstly is if you have P53 mutants who don't respond to this stress response, it doesn't prevent the growth, and so, as I said, cancer cells just like to grow. This could therefore be a mechanism by which um, there's a selection pressure for mutant P53 that prevents the inhibition of cell growth. And this is further supported by the fact that we know aerobic glycolysis is a hallmark of cancer cells and that P53 is commonly mutated in cancer. The second interesting point, which I feel like I might get asked if I don't talk about it, is what happens then if people are taking supplements to increase NAD plus levels? Well, as I said, this dimerization is driven by the ratio of NADH to NAD plus. So if you have more NAD plus, in theory it would drive the direction such that CTBP is more often as a monomer. This would therefore prevent P53 activation and the prevention of cellular growth. So that could be seen as a bad thing, but on the flip side, 
by having high NAD plus levels, it prevents the increase of the stress response in the first place because the NADH to NAD plus ratio would remain low. But bottom line, I don't really know the answer and it would definitely be more complicated than this because we know NAD plus has multiple functions beyond just being a redox coenzyme. But I hope this has given a good insight into cancer metabolism and the potential links between P53 and NAD plus levels. So hopefully you've learned something and as always, thanks for listening.